Hello everyone, back again. Um, thanks for watching. Had my last chemo two weeks ago Friday. Uh, this Friday, I have my final PET scan. And then on the 14th, I will have my last meeting with my doctor, get the final results of my um, PET scan and um, get the results that we all want to hear that um, I'm clear and I can move on with my life and start to put all this behind me. I mean, I kind of am already doing that, putting that behind me. Um, for those of you who, who, who know me, uh, you know, I don't really like to look back. Um, I want to go forward. Uh, it's been an interesting two weeks since the last chemo. Um, we were very excited. I was, uh, I was surprised because yeah, right now they don't let, they only let Marta go in, into the, uh, the facility with me, right? Um, only one person can go with you and yeah, it's considered your caregiver that goes with you. Well, my girls were here. Um, my oldest was working. My granddaughters were in school. So we walk out after that last chemo, um, which was actually took a lot. It didn't take the four, excuse me. It didn't take the entire four hours of like two and a half, three, maybe somewhere in there. And we walk outside and they were sitting out there waiting for me. So all my girls were there and it was, um, it was exciting to see, it made me really happy. Um, I, I did my best not to get all emotional and everything because I just wanted to be happy. You know, I just wanted it to, just wanted to have a different feeling about it, you know? Um, and then we went and grabbed something to eat, went to Boar Park and sat under, uh, you know, found a bench and, and, and ate. Uh, Ryla and Ariana left. Ariana is my oldest. Ryla is my oldest granddaughter. Um, they left and told me that Ryla had an appointment for x-rays on her back because she has a little scoliosis problem. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but they keep an eye on it, right? Um, Why well, didn't know this? They actually came home. They decorated the front yard. My sister and um, uh, a, a couple of her, my nieces were there and they decorated the front yard um, with the no more, no more chemo. If you saw that, that Margaret had posted, that was kind of funny. Um, and there was balloons, purple balloons, because that's the, that's the color ribbon for um, Hodgkin's lymphoma. And uh, so I drive up and if you see the video, you know, there's, they're there and it's just, it, it was crazy. And that was awesome. It made me really happy. Um, and and in, it, I was fine without all of that because that whole, the chemo part of it was over. Um, and I was, that was great that this other stuff that they did for me was the cherry on top, made it so special, so heartwarming, um, felt like a king <laughs> and it was good. It was, it was really good. Um, and then I had to deal with, you know, the effects of the chemo. So, you know, my hands and neuropathy, which I still have, it's sometimes it's not as bad. Sometimes it's bad and it, it kind of goes back and forth. So I'm waiting to see what the next couple of weeks, um, and month actually, uh, next couple of months, how the neuropathy hopefully slowly fades and I get all my feeling back. Um, that would be nice. Uh, and then, um, the one thing that I was, I was really happy that for the most part, I had stayed away from the really bad mouth sores. And of course the last treatment and I get the worst mouth sore, the worst mouth sore. It barely even came out. 
still kind of there a little bit. Um, I wanted to make this video probably a week ago, um, but I could barely talk. It, it, it was on this side of my tongue. It was pretty big and um, it hurt to brush my teeth. It uh, pretty much brushing my teeth. I was irritating it and then it would bleed. And so it was just brushing my teeth and spitting out blood was disgusting. Um, and just kind of, it hurt and the, the toothpaste burned so bad. Oh man. Reminded me of being a kid for all those of you who the little red iodine used to get and put on the cuts and it would just burn. Oh man, it was, it would burn so bad. My ears would pop, my eyes would water. I was like, oh man, why? Why on the last one? <laughs> Are you, am I getting this? You know, um, but I, I guess I'm, once again, I'm, I'm grateful that it was just on this last one and not on the previous 11 prior, you know what I mean? Uh, so that was, that was pretty painful. I, and I it hurt to eat. Um, it just, it was terrible. Um, so it's still kind of there, still bothers me every now and then. I gotta be careful with what I do sometimes because uh, while eating, it can rub up against the inside of the molar and then it just starts to hurt. And then it, after that, it just, it hurt. It just, it'll hurt for like a day. Um, then when I go to brush my teeth, I need to brush my teeth after I eat and I got to gargle with this um, concoction that we make with water, baking soda and salt. Burns, just burns, but I have to do those things or else it's going to get worse and I get worse. And the one thing that I found is that it made my mouth really sticky. Um, the corners of my mouth got, got really dry um, and it was like, hurt to like open my mouth, like to take a, this is see if I'm eating a hamburger, right? And I go to take a, big, a bite of the hamburger. It would hurt, the corners of my mouth would hurt. It was almost like I it was ripping. Weird, just weird. Thank God it was just this last time and, and nothing more than that. Um, and so that's going away, thank, thank God that's going away because that was, that was not a fun time. Um, and, uh, and so now I'm looking forward to the PET scan, um, and even more so looking forward to the, um, the results of that PET scan on the 14th. Um, according to the doctor, this Friday, I should, after this Friday, I should be fine to go out. Um, I like to go to a sporting event to go see my granddaughter play basketball, right? I, I should be able to do that. I'll have to wear a mask being around people for a while still um, and, uh, and try to get some type of uh, normalcy back in my life slowly. Uh, looking forward to that, um, especially looking forward to go seeing the basketball games because you guys know I'm a, I'm a basketball nut. So it's just, uh, I've been missing it bad. I've been missing it bad. Having to, to, to watch it, highlights, you know, from Ariana filming it and stuff. And then um, I got a, I got a Huddle subscription. I can watch some of the stuff on Huddle, for those of you who know what Huddle is. Um, but I just want to get back, you know, I want to get back out there and have some fun, watch the games and, and, and just yell and cheer and that stuff like that, right? The normal stuff. Um, and then I was informed by Kaiser, so I'll give you a little bit of a recap. Kaiser, because of the pandemic in the beginning, did not have a full oncology department. So they contracted out to Clovis or community hospitals. And that is why I'm at the Clovis Cancer Institute. I'm, I'm going there because they have a, um, a Hodgkin's lymphoma oncologist. So that's why I'm there. Well, I got a phone call about two weeks ago saying that um, Kaiser now has a full oncology staff and that they're going to be bringing me back in January to Kaiser. So my care will end with Cancer Institute of Clovis, which I'm kind of sad about because they're really good. Um, well, they, I'll put it this way, for me, 
um, and everything that we have experienced, they have been phenomenal. I couldn't have asked for better care um, than I got with them. Well, now I'm going to be going to Kaiser and I'll start my new treatment or ongoing treatment or what am I looking, what am I looking for? Um, care, I guess, with Kaiser or the new doctor. Um, and he will, of course, will have all the information, all of the notes, everything that has happened. And then they'll, I'm, I'm sure he's going to communicate with that doctor Clovis so that it could be a nice, easy transition. And then whatever I have to take, whatever medications or anything like that, that I have to take, any appointments that'll all be taken care of through Kaiser. So that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, and, and so that's, I'm hoping and praying that it's, I get the same level of care um, with this new doctor and Kaiser that I got with my doctor, my doctors and my nurses for the uh, Cancer Institute, because um, they've been phenomenal. Um, and it seems like my hair is starting to come back. Um, it's coming back a little bit weird. I got some patches right up here, so I don't know. Um, might have a very interesting hairdo in the next couple of months as it's growing out. It actually seems a little darker. It doesn't have as much gray. To me, it doesn't seem to have as much gray as it did before. And Margaret accommodates like it. It looks, it looks like it's so darker than it was before. Except my mustache. That's pretty much white. Um, so thinking maybe if I let my beard go out, that will be all white too. But it doesn't seem, it seems pretty pepperish compared to this. But we'll see, right? Um, so that's the update we have right now. Uh, I'm doing good, feeling good. Um, I feel like I'm getting stronger every day now. Um, now I need to start throwing in a little bit of an exercise regimen in there because um, so I'm excited to go back to work in January, which I'm very much looking forward to. And I want to be in some type of shape because I know that you know, be walking around and taking care of stuff. I'm going to get uh, tired. I'm going to be exhausted. So I uh, better start getting myself in shape now so that I'm a little bit prepared for what's for all the walking and the stuff I'll be doing, you know. And once again there, you know, being around a bunch of kids, uh, little ones especially, you know, because elementary school, they, well, pretty much all of them, but mainly the elementary school and kindergarten, preschool, because, you know, those are the, they always got sniffles, they always got runny noses, they always got something going on. They're just little germ bags running around out there, you know, so I got to make sure that I got my mask on, take care of myself because, you know, um, my immune system isn't going to be top notch. Um, and from what I've been seeing on my Hodgkin lymphoma page group that I've been following, um, some people it's like a year later and they're still not a hundred percent and then some people it's you know four months three months and they're they feel great uh so you just never know where you're gonna fall until you until you're there you know so i hope to give myself a little boost a little head start um and um hopefully prevent myself from, from getting sick. I don't want the flu. Um, yeah, there's Omicron out there, you know, but it's not the same, nowhere near the same as COVID or the Delta. Um, so we'll, we'll just take care of, well, I'll just take care of myself and, um, and not worry about it, right? You know, I can't go out there and be all concerned with every little thing that happens because I may as well just stay home, stay in the closet. Uh, but after the 14th, after that meeting, um, we do another video, let you guys know what they said. And um, I'm looking forward to that meeting. So th thanks for watching. Thanks for following me. Once again, thanks for all your prayers. Thanks for all the, you know, the comments. Just thank you for going on this journey with me. It's been, um, it's been something. We'll see you. Have a good week.